Well, what goes better with hot sauce than Mowata? That's right, there is a town called Mowata, Louisiana. It seems this small community between Eunice and Crowley suffered a three-year-long drought over 100 years ago. After rice farmers installed 14 new water wells for the fields, the area earned the name More Water Community. And that is where we begin our story. Out in Acadia Parish, in the middle of the rice fields and cattle farms, is a little community known as Mowata. This town has been around for over 100 years, even though you may not find it on some maps. These days, the most notable landmark in Mowata is a rice dryer that was built way back in 1947. So, what's in a name? How did Mowata get its name? Some folks might think it has some Indian or Cajun background to it, but it's not likely since this is a community that was started back in the 19th century by German immigrants. A former worker at the Louisiana State University Library in Eunice offered us clues with a book on Acadia Parish history written by the late Mary Alice Fontenot. The community was actually called Moore Water Community, and the newspapers of the day when they had elected officials listed it as more water communities. As the story goes, there were problems in getting the sign for the more water train depot in time for their big dedication party that included all sorts of dignitaries. And finally, just in the nick of time, the sign came in, everyone's breathing this great sigh of relief, lift the sign up out of the shipping crate and it says Moata. <laughs> Rather than more water, it's Moata, M-O-W-A-T-A. The Founding Fathers kept the sign and their party plans. German immigrants were not known for partying lifestyles, but over the generations, the Cajun culture would blend into everyday life. Self-taught fiddle player Bubba Fry knows that firsthand. He's a member of the Mowata House Band. He also runs the Mowata Store and Bubba Fry's Restaurant. The two stores sit next door to St. Lawrence Catholic Church and complete Mowata's business and cultural district. Because, you know, from a uh, German descent, you know, well, of course I have, you know, Cajun blood in me too, but then the Germans, they were, you know, very hardworking people, you know, and, and uh, it, you had fun when, only whenever you was finished with your, your work. And, I mean, it was always work, work, work. That's the depot. Oh, it had to be in, yeah, right on that side. Okay. And it burnt down in probably 1925, 26, somewhere in there. For more information on Mowata, look to the lifelong residents of Paul Fry and Loretta Curte. Loretta has all kinds of historic pictures and possibly our first controversy. This picture of a baseball team taken in 1911 has Mo Beer on their uniforms, not Mowata. But on uh, my picture, it says that uh, Mo Water was named Mo Beer before uh, it, it got the name Mo Water. I don't believe that. No, <laughs> I don't think so. They named the club Mo Beer because <laughs> they all like beer. <laughs> all the players that drank plenty of beer. <laughs> and that's why they called it Mo Beer, all right? Home Brew met Home Plate with the older men's team, while the youngsters, including Paul Fry, played fast pitch softball. These teams would get together on Sundays, cut out ball diamonds in the rice fields, and go up against some of the best teams across Acadiana. Johnny Tavis, in the middle of the back row, was known as one of the best area pitchers of his day. The local ball yard is named after him. Loretta Curte's mom was known as the mother of Mowata. Hilda Zahnbrucker took care of her 10 children, but it did not end there. She was an outgoing person. She could take care of us and everybody else. I guess that's where she got it from. She only went to the eighth grade, but she knew more psychology than anybody I know. <laughs> she could control everybody and everything. Sometimes she had all of her grandchildren there, like 16 of them at one time and they were all well behaved and doing whatever they were supposed to do. A lot of people talk about more war, that, what, that little town. That's a little pass-through. Well, it is a little pass-through, but it's a little happy pass-through. We were living there. 
And if you ever leave Mowata, somehow you'll always take a little of it with you. Eva Mae Leger Sasher moved to Eunice, seven miles away, and took her house with her. Special thanks goes to the Arthur Lower family. I raised my children here. When we were, at the time, I had 11 children in this one house. We had four rooms. Then Mr. Arthur decided to add another room, so I raised all those children in that house in those five rooms. It, it was fun in the country. It was, you know, I, I couldn't live anywhere else but in the country and probably more water. You know, my, my great-great-grandfather, my great-grandfather, my grandfather and my daddy was never probably more than one square mile of this whole place in their whole entire life, and I can see I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I, I'm never more than one square mile of this place. Just God and I know about it, and that's the way I like it. <laughs> it's a small uh, community, very uh, peaceful, and uh, I love it. This probably won't be the last we hear of Mo Wada and the Mo Wada House Band. They have a CD out called Live at Bubba Fry's Number One, and they sell it at the restaurant for ten bucks. And according to Louisiana Life magazine, the Moata store, Frank's is one of the best places in the state for boudin.